you deploy Skype for Business Server 2015, you will discern best practices based on your experience. You can use the best practices in future deployments. The following are some best practices you can apply when determining the phases for your deployment and the order in which the features and functionality should be implemented in the organization. First, let's discuss internal deployments. Most organizations start with installing and configuring Skype for Business Server 2015 functionality within the organization network through LAN, WAN, and VPN. They deploy IM, presence, and web conferencing capabilities. Small organizations can install Skype for Business Server 2015 Standard Edition, which provides them with most of the features of Skype for Business Server 2015 except external user access and voice telephony. Organizations that require redundancy can start with a pilot project and then proceed to production. If they anticipate the need for redundancy or the need for additional servers to provide more capacity when moving to production, they can deploy a single server Enterprise Edition installation of Skype for Business Server. This installation comprises one front-end server and a back-end Microsoft SQL Server. In this installation, it is very easy to add a secondary server and then implement DNS load balancing and hardware network load balancing for both servers, rather than migrate from a Skype for Business Server 2015 Standard Edition installation. Although it is possible to deploy video at this stage, many organizations do not pursue this in the beginning because of the bandwidth requirements for video. Also, implementing video adds to complexity. Implementing instant messaging and presence is an easy way to start the deployment and is easily accepted. IM and its success in the organization can be used as a driver for additional functionality. Another important topic is PSTN dial-in conferencing. In many organizations, PSTN dial-in conferencing is deployed with the initial deployment. The main reason for this is to save cost, where organizations can perceive the cost benefits in a complete Skype for Business Server 2015 project within a 3-12 to 12 month time frame. In addition, deploying PSTN dial-in conferencing is a good approach to start work with telephony and gateways. If you are not familiar with telephony and gateways, you can gain good experience when deploying PSTN dial-in conferencing. Next, let's discuss external deployments. Performing the edge server deployment for external scenarios can be quite challenging, primarily because of firewall implementation issues. Because of these challenges, some organizations deploy external scenarios many months after the internal deployment has been completed and rolled out to users. With Skype for Business Server 2015, the planning and deployment of edge scenarios has been simplified and this will probably change this time frame considerably. In some organizations, PSTN dial-in conferencing and edge server deployments are deployed at the same time because they complement each other. With both options available, users can easily join a web conference in various situations. An external user who has been invited to a web conference, an, ex an internal user who is driving toward work, and an internal user without access to a computer can join the meeting. Lastly, let's discuss Enterprise Voice or PBX integration. Implementation of an Enterprise Voice or PBX integration can be complex depending on your choice of integration method. The simplest method to perform Enterprise Voice or PBX integration is by using a qualified SIP to PSTN gateway or SIP trunking. In all voice deployments, but especially when implementing direct SIP and call via work, possessing knowledge on SIP is a great advantage because you can debug and troubleshoot any issues during integration. Enterprise voice deployment usually includes dial-in conferencing if it has not already been deployed. The order of Skype for Business Server 2015 deployment depends on the business driver of the organization. If an organization's main business driver is access for remote users, work from home users, or traveling users, you will need both internal and external deployments simultaneously.